our previous 1700 and 7700K coverage focused on game streaming, ultimately ruling that the 1700 would be best suited for a task like playing games while simultaneously live streaming them. Today we're looking at the other end of the spectrum. Which one does better with 1440p 144Hz gaming or 144Hz in general? And because we know the 7700K is a leader in gaming performance from our earlier CPU bottleneck 1080p testing, what we're looking at is can the 1700 also achieve that sort of frame rate? We've pitted these chips against one another before in VR testing where our conclusion was that the GPU choice mattered far more since both CPUs can deliver 90 FPS equally well. And this newest test is less of a competition and more of a can the 1700 do it too scenario. The 1700 has features that make it attractive for casual streaming or rendering, but that doesn't mean customers want to sacrifice smooth 144Hz in pure gaming scenarios. There are applications for both. Before getting to those, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA and their 1080 Ti SC2, which we've recommended fairly highly for its build quality and uh, the ICX sensors, which are kind of fun to play with. You can check our full SC2 review for the 1080 Ti if you're curious to learn more, or you can click the link in the description below to find the product page for the 1080 Ti SC2. So look at this test less of as a versus scenario and more of as a can the 1700 do it also? Because we know that the 7700K leads in unconstrained 1080p gaming scenarios. We know that already. We know that its frame times are at least the same, if not better, in a lot of the games that we've tested. Maybe not appreciably so, but objectively so. And so now the question is to verify what we and other media outlets have been saying, which is the 7700K theoretically could do 144 hertz better than the 1700, just like we validated our own previous statements about the 1700 doing streaming while gaming better. Turns out that was the case. So we'll look and see if the 144 hertz scenario favors Intel in this testing. So for this test, we're using the review sample R7-1700 all the testing methods, the specs for the machines are in the article linked in the description below. And that includes the latest BIOS update for the Crosshair motherboard. And then we're using the uh, i7-7700K that we purchased from Silicon Lottery, which actually is a, a cool site, siliconlottery.com if you're interested. So we bought one of those to go along with our other engineering sample, which just was an engineering sample, so it needed to be replaced. This one can technically go up to 5.2 gigahertz, for this benchmark, because we haven't delitted it yet, we are only going to 4.9 gigahertz when we overclock. For the review sample 1700, we're going to 3.9 gigahertz because that was the most stable with all the games, and uh, then otherwise running stock between the two CPUs. So that's what we're looking at for uh, the two processors and for the specs, and the rest is in the article I stated. For games, we chose five popular games that we expected to run at 144 frames at some level of graphics, as in actually achievable at 1440p, because that was ultimately the goal, was 1440p, 144Hz. When we asked on Twitter and in Discord with Patreon backers what frame rate they preferred and what resolution they preferred it on, it was 1440p, 144. That's the growing one. 1080p, 144 was second place, but not anywhere close to leading. So even at high resolutions, we tested Doom, Dota 2, Rocket League, Overwatch, and Battlefield 1. Those are games where you'd want the higher frame rate. Again, success here for the 1700 isn't defined as victory over the 7700K. It is defined as keeping up with the 7700K. Just like success for the 7700K and the streaming benchmarks would have been keeping up with the 1700. Since we know that each one is already advantaged in its discipline against the newcomer, which in this case is going to be AMD, and the streaming one was the 7700K Intel CPU. So before diving into the results, one final disclaimer here. The point of this series we're doing, these are follow-up tests from the reviews. The point of these is to illustrate with a bit deeper testing on each specific topic that there are disciplines where each CPU has use cases. It's not quite as binary as buy this one, it's better for these two, so especially these two. R5's i5's gets a bit murkier, but these two, it's it's really, they've each got good applications. So we're trying to show, here's where each one of them stands out. And then hopefully you can take all of that data and make your own assessment, because we're not in a position to judge if the 7700K or the 1700 better fits your uses as a user. That's up to you to determine.
but we're giving you all the data for each of the, uh, we'll call them stereotypical use cases that people have brandished for each of these CPUs. Overwatch starts us off. We use a special testing method for Overwatch that's detailed in the article linked below and was originally found when we did our Overwatch performance optimization guide. Overwatch caps at 300 FPS, so we've got a decent amount of headroom for testing, but we're not unlimited. Starting with 1080p at max settings, we're hitting 246 FPS average on both the stock and overclock 7700K, and as detailed in the article below, we're using a 1080 Ti FDW. So we're up against other limits here. These two are effectively identical in performance and fall within our error bars indicated on the chart. The R7-1700 is capable of achieving our 144Hz goal, although the low-end frame times do dip down below 144Hz, if that matters to you. This becomes a game of perception and subjectivity, and speaking subjectively, we don't much notice the difference. There are certainly folks who think they can see one, and if that's the case, it's up to you to determine whether you fit into that crowd. If so, take note and buy the appropriate CPU. Both of these CPUs can sustain 200Hz displays at 1080p if desired, though the 7700K is a much better option if higher quality settings at 240Hz are desired. That is an insanely small market right now, let's just be clear, but the few who are truly fanatical enough about frames to really actually want 240Hz would want to opt for the 7700K in this particular title. Note, of course, that you can only really do this at 1080p with these types of settings. Let's move on to 1440p. At this resolution, everything levels out to perform within a couple percentage points in average frame rate. The 7700K is technically leading, but it's close enough to be within our margins for this particularly long test. The R7-1700 is consistently lower in frame times, measurably and repeatedly, though not in a manner which is appreciable. Both CPUs are capable of sustaining 144Hz at 1440p, and so both pass that bar, minimally anyway. Here's 4K, just to show it. We are completely within test margins here and can reliably state that this is completely GPU limited, as you'd expect. This has become a GPU benchmark at this point and is no longer a processor comparison. We're using the same card for all tests, so we're seeing the same performance. And differences here are statistically insignificant and should not be read into further than effectively identical and within test variants. Moving on to Dota 2, the core of our most recent 1700 versus 7700K streaming test was Dota 2, so it's only fair that the game makes a return here. As a side note, because of this 144Hz testing, we discovered a typographical error in one of our streaming benchmark graphs pertaining to the 1700 baseline performance, the FPS that is. That's been corrected in the article with a note, though the conclusion remains unaffected. Basically, the R7-1700's baseline performance when not streaming was lower than we originally thought, but streaming performance was unaffected and remained identical, since, again, just a typo on the baseline item. Anyway, that cleared away now that we have a new test to look at. Let's start with 1080p and ultra settings, where we've manually maxed the game. Dota 2 shows clear favor to the i7-7700K in both its stock and overclock configurations. We'll later turn down some settings to try and achieve that 144 FPS marker. As you can see, the 7700K is clearly ahead in this title under current conditions. And again, this is tested differently than our previous Dota 2 test because we're using a different duration for the scene tested, so you can't really compare the numbers. We're at 174 FPS average on the 4.9 GHz 7700K with a stock CPU at 164 FPS average. 1% 0.1% low metrics are always distant in Dota 2, but are higher with the Intel part than the 1700. The 1700 is clearly limiting GPU performance here, where we're seeing a 117 FPS average when overclocked to 3.9 GHz and 106 when in stock clocks. This places the overclock 7700K 49% ahead of the overclock 1700, with the stock 7700K about 55% ahead of the 1700 stock. Let's move on to the star of the show, 1440p at 144Hz. The stock R7-1700 performs at about 106 FPS average, roughly the same as we saw at 1080p, indicating that we're still choking. Overclocking gets us roughly the same within test variants at 117 FPS average. The i7 CPUs haven't really changed here either. We'll see more of a change at 4K once the GPU bottleneck is instantiated, but for now we're clearly CPU bottlenecked on all these parts. We wanted to know what settings would be required to get the R7-1700 CPU up to 144fps and achieve our 1440p 144Hz goal, so we dropped the settings as indicated on the screen now. With our low settings, we're able to free up enough of the CPU to ascend to 149fps average when overclocked and nearly 140fps average stock. Again, this is by dropping basically every setting down to low or its near low point. 
That's getting about where our target is, so dropping settings to low and overclocking pushes beyond 144 hertz territory on the 1700. Just to close this one out, here's a 4K charge. GPU bottlenecks finally enter play, choking the 7700K down to 156 FPS average. The R7 1700 sits where it has been for the past two charts, and the CPU is clearly the limiting factor here. Doom is up next and stands as one of the lightest workloads we benchmark presently, despite looking pretty good. The game is well optimized to a point of being difficult to benchmark at times, particularly given its 200 FPS physics bug that causes frame rate to lock. The closer we get to 200 FPS, the less accurate our top end results will be as the frame rates are capped, so that'll drag the average down. For this reason, testing 1080p is pointless. At 1440p with ultra settings and asynchronous compute on, because async compute works with anti-aliasing disabled these days, the 4.9 GHz 7700K is chart topping at 181 FPS average, 141 FPS 1% lows, and 124 FPS 0.1% lows. The CPU is beginning to bump into the 200 FPS limiter in some scenes, so this is truncated a bit. The stock CPU runs at 178 FPS average, with the overclocked 3.9 GHz 1700 at 167 FPS average, and lows which are proportionately scaled. This places the overclocked 7700K about 8.4% ahead of the overclocked R7 1700, not accounting for the FPS cap. The stock 1700 runs at 166 FPS average, so we're really not gaining much from the overclock in this particular title, at least with limited upward scaling. Regardless, it's clear either CPU could reasonably achieve ultra settings at 1440p, 144Hz, and Doom, and so we meet our objective on both the R7 1700 and the i7-7700K. Despite the latter's 8% lead, both are capable of achieving this goal. So depending on your uses, you may well be okay with the 1700. At 4K resolution, just because that's what Doom requires to become stressful, all the CPUs become more bound by the GPU than anything else, getting stuck at 92 to 97 FPS average. The 7700K technically still holds a lead here, but not an appreciable one. The R7-1700 and i7-7700K are effectively identical in performance with regard to appreciable differences, and neither is capable of holding 144Hz. We'd have to lower settings or resolution to get that. Rocket League is next and is an extremely undemanding game, at least without modification. Its maximum frame rate is capped at 250fps out of box. Just like Doom, anything beyond 250fps will not be reflected in averages since it's not recorded, so our numbers will be dragged down as we approach that cap. At 1440p, the stock 7700K was already at max, 249fps average, limiting its usefulness in the comparison since there's no telling what it would be running at without that artificial cap. The stock 1700 managed 203 FPS, which indicates a CPU limitation, further proven by our improvement in average FPS by 12.4% when overclocked to 3.9 GHz. At 1440p, we're able to achieve 144 Hz playback, actually 200 Hz playback on the R7-1700. The 7700K carries tighter frame times for overall greater frame delivery consistency, and so there's an argument to be made for keeping even low-end performance towards 140 FPS, but the averages are passing on both the 7700K, particularly after overclocking, and are largely not really appreciable once you get kind of higher than that anyway. Moving to 4K, the cap becomes less of a concern as we stray further from 250 FPS. Both CPUs are still above 144 average. Given the low intensity of Rocket League with a 1080 Ti, the 7700K is holding its lead by about 10% on average. Whether or not this is significant in advantages is up to you as the buyer, and depends on your other use cases. If you're not going to use it for anything else but this type of gaming, maybe buy the CPU that would best fit the scenario. That'd be the 7700K. If you're planning to do other things, consider the 1700. Battlefield 1 is the last benchmark. These tests are conducted differently from our standard Battlefield benchmarks, just like the Dota 2 ones were here, and so the data is not at all comparable to past data. This test is run using more intensive scenes involving heavier combat that's recorded over a longer period of time. It's not quite what you'd get in a 64-player server, so account for that, but it is as close as we can reliably get without introducing a million uncontrollable variables by 64 grieving players. At 1080p, the 7700K leads at 174 FPS average overclocked or 172 FPS average stock. This positions the CPU beyond 144 Hz territory, with the R7 1700 falling just below at 132 FPS average overclocked and 123 FPS average stock. Low end frame times sit behind the 7700K. At 1440p ultra settings, the 7700K becomes more GPU bound and limits to 133 to 134 FPS average with results between the stock and overclocked variants outputting effectively equally thanks to the GPU limitation. The R7-1700 now operates in the range of 122 average to 125 average, 
Regardless of vendor, neither CPU is hitting 144 hertz at 1440p. So to get that, we have to drop down to 1440p and high settings. With our lowered settings, the 7700K pushes up to 150 to 153 FPS average, now achieving our 144 hz goals, and the R7-1700 sits around 139 FPS average when overclocked, or 133 FPS average when stock. It's tough to get much more performance out of this given that most graphics options and games center around GPU bound items, but lowering geometric complexity and other LOD type effects would help boost frame rate a bit. Where Intel can run a mix of high and ultra for 144 Hz at 1440p in our test environment, and again, your mileage will vary based on scene, AMD needs to drop to a mix of medium and high. And again, the point of this coverage is to provide a look at the reality of the situation of these two CPUs. They're both good CPUs, but depending on what you're doing, one of them may be less good for your use case. So this hopefully, along with the streaming benchmark and the VR benchmark, helps show where each one shines. In VR, we saw no effective difference really at all, even objectively looking at the numbers with really narrow margins. You just, you don't see a lot of difference. With streaming, there is a measurable difference, certainly, and the 1700 won handily over the 7700K. With this test, depending on the game, we're seeing scenarios where, e well, generally as a rule across all these titles, the 7700K is basically always in the lead. How much of a lead depends on the game, how much that lead matters depends on the target frame rate. In cases where we're going north of 200 FPS, like Rocket League or Overwatch in some scenarios, does it really matter if you're targeting 144 Hertz? Maybe not. But if all you're doing is gaming, the 7700K gets you that much further past whatever FPS it is you want. So it's entirely up to you whether that matters. Some people are frame rate nuts more than others, and uh, I mean, that's, that's really all there is to it. If you're doing stuff alongside this high FPS gaming, for example, maybe you're a streamer and you don't want to use an external box for one reason or another, and you don't want to use NV encoder for one reason or another, then consider the 1700 or something like that. Because as we've tested, it is clearly superior in CPU encoding tasks while gaming and streaming simultaneously. If you're not doing that, options include things like Blender animations or Premiere encoding or something like that, where if you're doing something that's CPU accelerated, it would probably be better to get the Ryzen CPU. If you're doing something that's very heavily CUDA accelerated and you're gaming otherwise, the 7700K is still a good buy. So as you can see, this is not me waffling between a decision between these two CPUs. I'm not trying to appease everyone by saying both are good at different things because the reality is they are. It's not an attempt to make friends with commenters on the internet. These CPUs are both good at different things. It's very complex. Which one is better? And it depends entirely on what you're doing. So the point of this is to say that despite what you see in comments, they're both good at different things. Figure out what things you do, take our numbers and others, hopefully look around the web and find others and combine them to figure out what you should buy. Uh, so at this point, spectators in the comments are probably getting whiplash from crying shill for AMD and shill for Intel, depending on which benchmark it is, because as you can see, it sways from AMD to Intel who wins the benchmark depending on what task we're testing and wins theirs in scare quotes because victory really depends on what else the CPU is going to do. If it's only gaming, well, I guess Intel wins here. If it's live streaming and gaming, AMD wins there. So it boils down to wins and loses. There's some of your wins and losses. As always, you can find more information in the article below. Hopefully this helps paint a picture that yes, things are quite complicated with silicon and semiconductors and processors. And uh, at this point, you should have enough data to put together some thoughts on whether you need the 1700 or the 7700K for this type of workload and which one benefits you more for other types of workloads. You can check our full reviews or our other follow-up coverage for benchmarks outside of just gaming. Subscribe for more, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. You can go to gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. And I will see you all next time. Let's move on to the star of the shore. Mm, star of the shores.